Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our arranging series. Today we're going to get into the actual hows and uh, specific details about what goes into creating an arrangement. So the first question, obviously, is, well, how do you pick the music that you're going to be arranging, assuming that someone else isn't telling you, I want this song for this event? Uh, well, you start by just finding what piques your interest, what makes you excited. Because you want for your arrangement to be creative, and in order for that to happen, you have to be excited about the music. So just whatever sounds good, and whatever you can envision in the ensemble that you're arranging for. Uh, keep it simple, especially for your, especially for your first few arrangements. Uh, something like uh, Bach or Mozart, that stuff always arranges very well. Um, Generally speaking, you want to be sensible about the kinds of music that you're arranging for the kinds of ensembles. For example, Brahms' Requiem has lots of solos in it and big thick textures and giant orchestral effects. Probably won't uh, uh, arrange very well for a string quartet or a sextet or a brass quartet or anything like that. So, you want to keep it simple. Um, what do you need? What do you need to arrange? Well, you need an audio recording, of course. And you also need the sheet music so that you can double check what it is you're arranging to. Um, now, the sheet music bit is a little bit, you know, you don't always have to have the sheet music, especially if you're arranging pop music. Generally, that stuff is simple enough that you're not likely to miss a detail. Uh, for something like Debussy, though, uh, you're definitely going to want uh, the sheet music because of all the uh, unexpected harmonic stuff. It's not predictable. Generally speaking, if you can predict how the music's gonna go, if it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, then you're, you can probably get by without the sheet music. But for stuff that's more complex than that, you're gonna want the sheet music, and we'll get back to that, why you want the sheet music in a minute. Uh, you also want the instruments that you're arranging for it, if possible. Uh, if you don't play the instruments, uh, have someone on hand who does, so that you can check practical matters. Uh, things like uh, shifting or register changes, things like that. Anything that's going to be uh, difficult and uh, not ideal for the instrument. You want the instruments you're arranging for on hand so you can check those things in real time. Uh, otherwise, you have to add a step at the end where you're doing a bunch of editing and uh, making sure that stuff fits and all that jazz. It's easier to do that stuff in real time. Um, where do you start? Okay, so you've got your music, you've got your audio file, you've got your uh, arranging software in front of you, or if you prefer, uh, just staff paper. Uh, where do you start? You start with just what you hear. Start rotating bass lines and melody lines and stuff like that, and then fill in the middle as you go along. Uh, make sure also that you're envisioning the whole thing from beginning to end. For example, I just recently uh, arranged uh, Debussy's Claire de Lune for string quartet, um, and that piece of music is very, very beautiful, uh, but it has lots of melodic material that repeats itself. So you have to be, uh, <coughs> while I was arranging that, I had to make sure that I was uh, uh, being very creative with how, okay, so if this material presents itself three different times, then I have to make sure that I'm arranging it three different ways, or at least two different ways, so that it's not, you know, repeat, 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 and getting super repetitive. Um, other guidelines to be attentive to? Be creative! Uh, bass line, for example, doesn't always have to be in the bass. Sometimes it can be carried by an alto instrument, and the bass instrument can be more melodic, stuff like that. Uh, arrangements get boring if, you know, the soprano voice always has the melody and the bass voice always has the bass line. So, mix things up. Be creative. Be resourceful. If, especially if you're arranging for an ensemble that you're unfamiliar with, for example, a, a vocal ensemble, make sure that you go and hear other examples of what, maybe if you're arranging a song, hear other examples of what that song sounds like when it's arranged, uh, or just hear what other examples of that medium sound like. There's absolutely nothing wrong with stealing ideas from other people, as long as you're not just just flat out plagiarizing. Your arrangements do have to be your own, but you're allowed to be influenced by other people. So go and check out what, what other people are doing. Take their ideas. Um, lastly, check, double check, and triple check your arrangements. Make sure that once you're, once you're done, once you're happy with everything, go through the score, assuming that you grabbed the score, and just go through it note by note by note and make sure that everything 
uh, everything absolutely totally checks out because you want to have an honest arrangement. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to, re to uh, arranging. Last thing I want to let you, you all know about is a really awesome resource. It's called uh, imslp.org. It's a website that has uh, sheet music of everything that's public domain. So anything that you want to arrange, chances are, unless it's 20th century stuff, the website, this website, www.imslp.org, is going to have it. So you, there's no need to go out and spend tons of money on the scores that you need to uh, arrange from. So uh, that's that. Next time you check in, you'll be seeing a uh, rendition of an arrangement that I've done myself. So you can see an example of what an arrangement looks like in real time. So uh, that's that. I'll see you next time.